Y'all, this is about to be like a really short insomnia chat. I just call it like a video diary, but I feel like I cannot go to bed until I get my thoughts expressed. Also, please ignore this zit. That's what I get for wearing my glasses to try to take care of my eyes. Now I have this ginormous zit. Anywho, I have thoughts. I feel like I need to express them. I feel like life is moving so ridiculously fast. Like I am about to be 23. 23 which is absolutely wild to me and august is like we're already in mid-august and 2023 is almost like over what the heck like that's honestly disrespectful like that's actually insane to me and like i needed to express that like the thoughts needed to come out of my body because like what is going also like i'm gonna be 23 and i don't know if that's because that feels like an age for me like that's an age you know like 22 it's like okay you're still kind of a child like you, you're like a little older than 21 I'm 23 like I'm gonna be 23 I'm about to be like a an adult like a whole full adult and I do not adult like I am so wildly immature when it comes to all aspects of adulting and I'm gonna be 23. Like, I can't even digest that. That actually makes me sick. The, like, I'm having like a, not even a quarter life crisis, but like close to a quarter life crisis. I just feel like there've been so many changes this year, like in my life and like in my family's life. So that could be why too. Um, I feel like I've simultaneously done so much this year while also doing nothing. I want to talk about like the random things I'm obsessed with because I just need to chat about it. I don't know if anybody follows this Twitter account. It's Ghostface's Twitter account. Can you guys see it? Okay, and whoever runs this needs a raise because this is so funny. I saw this today and it cracked me up. He really out here saying sleepover with Courtney Cox and it's just like a scene of them like passed out from fighting I'm assuming. Like that is hilarious. This man is a comedian. And the one I saw the other day that really cracked me up was the Welcome to New York Ghostface version where he made like a 1989 album like come on my man's is a comedian like whoever runs this account needs a raise because i follow this account and it brings me an immense amount of joy like it's so funny and like i've seen the scream movies but not all of them i think i've seen i've seen the first one because that's a classic and it was on my like halloween movie bucket list because it has Paige from charmed in it and i love her like love her um I'm a charmed girly like obviously and she was my favorite character although I like Piper now like the older I get the more I like Piper like Paige will always have a special place in my heart because I wanted to be her but like I have a special place in my heart for Piper as well and I think that's because she's like such a mothering figure I like wanted her to be my mother like so badly like just Piper seems like the best mother ever honestly like if I ever have children I strive to be like Piper as a mother like that's my mother goal because she's just like she is mother oh my god I didn't even realize I could use that expression she literally is like I wanted her to be my mother so badly um and I find her characters like she's definitely a comfort character for me I just find her so comforting um but I'm obsessed with that Twitter account so I've only seen like the first movie I can't remember if I've seen the second one to be honest and I watched the show, like a little bit of the show, but then they killed off too many people. Listen, I don't know what I was expecting, but like they killed off like half of my favorite couple. And then it was like most of the original characters like from season one were dead. And I was like, I don't really care anymore. Like season two came around and they started like, they had like two characters left from season one and they tried to add all these other characters. And I was like, I just don't care about these characters like I just don't um I just think Scream works better in a movie aspect you know what I mean like it's better as a movie because you kind of are expecting something different from a movie whereas like a show 
I'm not in, like an anthology show type of person because like I get used to the story and the characters when I'm watching a show and I'm in the mindset of like I want to continue with that storyline. Like, the only show I watch that's like an anthology is American Horror Story and one that has all the same actors so it's like my brain doesn't get that bothered by the changing of stuff but also like I mostly just watch it for Evan Peters. I'm gonna be so real. And Tasia Farmiga, cause I love her, she's so talented. Um, but like that, since it's the same actors, I don't get bothered, but this like wasn't the same actors. Um, so yeah, anywho, so like this account just makes me laugh. Like to get me, who's not like a Scream super fan, following that account, 10 out of 10, A plus, give them a raise. That's all I have to say, whoever runs that account. Um, and obviously I'm obsessed with the Cerniolo triplets. Like, I love them. They're so funny. Um, I'm trying to convince my sister to watch them. I just sent her a video and I was like, is she sent? She was like, what are those triplets? <laughs> what did she say? She goes, what are the triplets you watch? And I was like, the Cerniolo triplets. And then she's like, oh, like, I was watching a YouTube video and one of the YouTubers I like talked about them in the video. She's like, skip to four minutes like tell me if this is them and I was like yep that's them and then she was like I don't know if I'd like them or not so I sent her if you are a Sterniolo triplet fan like this is one of the funniest videos of all time um so I sent her this video and I was like can you please like watch this tonight and report back like I just need you to I don't know if she actually will um maybe if I post it on the internet though she'll be held accountable and she will but um yeah, so I sent it to her and I'm like, please watch it tonight and report back because no one in my real life watches them. So I have nobody to like laugh about them with. And like, I wanted to go see them on tour, but like, I didn't have anyone to go with because nobody watches them that I know. And I'm like, so upset. Also, they don't have a Boston show, which is so weird because they are from Boston. Like they're from Somerville. So why do you not have a Boston show? Let me know. Like, I'm gonna try to bug them into making a Boston show because how are you gonna have three shows in Florida but not one in Boston? And that is wild to me. Absolutely wild. No hate because I adore them, but I'm like, guys, like I literally, when the, t when the tickets went on sale, I was like, oh, of course they'll have a Boston show. Why would I even ask that? They're from here. And then there wasn't one. I was so upset. Well, I hope they add one later because I would still like to see them on tour. I'm like just getting my thoughts out. This is like an insomnia chat video diary about nothing in particular because I had a lot of thoughts and I just needed to express them. Like I'm gonna treat this this camera like my diary, you know? So enjoy because you're getting some rambling. Oh, I've been playing Pokemon Go lately. Okay, listen, I did not play it during COVID. I didn't play it during the lockdown and everyone was playing it and I wish I had played it because it would have been so entertaining like walking around and doing it but now i play it and there was so many pokemon out today it was wonderful and i caught so many um so i'm so excited but that's like a random obsession of mine lately um i'm also i've never played animal crossing but i'm gonna download it on my switch because i do have a switch but all i have on there is mario kart because that's why i got it originally because i love mario kart but i'm gonna get animal crossing because i want to play it at and I've heard nothing but good things about it. And then I think I want to get Mario Golf, I think, because me and my friends play that and it's super duper fun. Um, yeah, so I gotta look into that because I've been wanting to like play more games, if that makes sense. And I'm like, I, I have a Switch. Like, why don't I just download more games to my Switch and play them? Like, I don't really understand why I don't utilize the Switch more in my mind. Um, I think it's because I left it. I have it downstairs plugged into my TV and I'm a room person, like I hang out in my room. So like, I should really just move it up to my room more and then bring it downstairs when I want to use it downstairs because it, I'll pick it up more if it's in my room, you know? Yeah, so I wanna get that. I can't really think of any other games. So if you guys know like fun Switch games that aren't astronomically expensive, comment down below. Um, Cause I wanna like game more and like, like, you know what I mean? Um, Cause I like loved Call of Duty in college, but I don't want to spend like 30,000 bajillion dollars on like, like a PC computer that I'm only going to use for that and then have to pay for like the memberships and, and the games and like same with like a PS4, PS5, like you have to buy that, like buy the PS4 or the PS5, then buy the games, then if you want to play like maps, like different maps and stuff, or like you want to play live, you have to like 
buy that and it's like a subscription or something and you have to like pay monthly that's just like a lot of money for me so i'm like i don't want to get into a hobby that's going to cost me that much money but like i love call of duty like i play that all the time in college and i do kind of miss playing it i'm trying to think oh summer i turned pretty you know what i have some more thoughts about that i'm still team conrad went into season one not having a team team conrad now right ended season one team conrad went into season two team conrad ended season two team conrad and that that will continue like i'm not gonna jump ship like some people do like first of all it's baffling to me because i see so many people saying oh like if you read the books you would be or no what are they say they're like oh my god i can't even think of i saw someone tweet today that was like i wish more people watched the show without reading the books because then they'd be team jeremiah and i'm sitting here like i have never read the books didn't know anything about the books before the show came out and i'm still team conrad so that is not a true statement and my sister tells me that Conrad is like terrible in the books. So like if anything, I would think that the people that are team Jeremiah like the books better because my sister's team Jeremiah, but she hasn't watched the show. Um, she's just read like, I think the first book. I don't know if she read the second one. Um, and she's team Jeremiah because he's, I guess, I don't even want to say better because that makes me want to throw up. Um, I guess he's like nice in the books. I don't know. And this is no hate to the actor because the actor seems marvelous this i just don't like the character yeah so i'm like that's not true but i actually i actually have a theory i think older people are team conrad and the younger people are team jeremiah that's kind of my theory because i think that people who are like my age like in their 20s we were around for like the gossip girl the vampire diaries era like and like twilight like the, you know what i mean love triangles were oh the hunger games love triangles were a big thing then and most people were i mean there were a few that were on like team stefan and stuff but most people were like team damon and they were on the team of the like relatively toxic man i will admit that i'm not gonna sit here and say that damon and chuck bass are never toxic but like most people were on like team toxic and like liked the guys that like were deeper and they kind of had issues and they were like the bad boy and like so i think that that's why because i think it's like nostalgic for us and we like almost appreciate it more because that's the tv that we grew up watching and that's not to say that the people who are younger who are like in their teens or whatever like haven't seen those sh those shows i'm sure they have but it's very different watching them now knowing how it ends and stuff and having the whole show like laid out for you than it is like we experienced it like on live tv like waiting a week for each episode watching it live not knowing how it's going to end like there's a that's a very different experience so I think that that is why, yeah, so that's kind of why I think most older people are Team Conrad and most younger people are Team Jeremiah. I also think that the younger people are like, oh, like, Conrad is toxic and Jeremiah is not, and they don't, like, see the ways in which they are both toxic. You know what I mean? And I think that, like, I don't know if it's because of, like, those shows or because we're just, like, older and have more perspective. But like, at least for me personally, I hate speaking generally like this because I don't want to offend anyone, but like it is just a show, so it's not a big of a deal. Yeah, I just think at least for me, because I'm used to all that, the ways in which Conrad are toxic is not toxic to me at all, just because like, I mean like the Vampire Diaries, like he was out there killing people and I was in full support. That's not to say that that behavior is okay but i'm just saying like i think i'm a little desensitized to the toxicity whereas like people who didn't grow up watching those shows maybe even notice it more or it bothers them more um and while i am team conrad i'm not going to sit here and say that this man is a great communicator okay he's not he's a terrible communicator he bottles up his feelings he is like captain misunderstanding like he never explains himself and he never really like tries to clear up the misunderstanding i don't know if he just doesn't realize that it's happening like spoiler alert the whole prom thing with belly 
he could have just like talked to her, like went after her and explained it, or he could have talked, tried to talk to her later and he never tries to talk to her again. And I'm like, I don't know if he just genuinely didn't realize it was a misunderstanding or if like, it's just cause he's so sensitive. Cause I obviously he would just rather like not deal with his problems. Like he's kind of just wants to like hope they go away, which like I can relate. I'm kind of like that too. Um, and, and that way his behavior is toxic. I'm not going to say it's not. Um, but are we also going to sit here and act like Jeremiah isn't toxic too? Like they're, they're both toxic and Belly's toxic as well. I will get into that. Um, but Jeremiah like fully knows, knew that Conrad liked Belly, then actively sabotaged them with the firework. Like in the in season one, he actively sabotages them. Like you you can't argue that he doesn't. Like come on, like when he sees them kissing on the fourth, like I don't I don't even think him and Belly had kissed yet. I could be wrong, but I don't think they had. And Conrad didn't know. I'm talking about purely season one right now because there's so much discourse about this. And he actively sabotages them, and then gets with her, knowing Conrad liked her. Like the whole house. The mothers knew, Stephen knew, like everybody knew that Belly liked Conrad and the mothers at least knew that Conrad liked Belly too. So Jer there's no way Jeremiah didn't know. So I'm like, are you serious? Like you really like, you went into that knowing that and then like you, you set yourself up to get hurt is what I'm saying. Like, and I get you can't help who you have feelings for, but it's not like he didn't know. Like, it's not like these feelings came out of left field. Like, Jeremiah and Belly's feelings for each other, say what you want, they came out of left field. Literally random. They were random. Um, and I know there's arguments about that too, but I'm just saying, like, in the eyes of everyone else. And then, okay, then they can't even hold hands at Thanksgiving, but Jeremiah can make out with Belly on Conrad's car at his campus when they know he's taking his exam and is gonna come outside. Are you serious? You can't wait? Are you serious? And season two makes me so angry because I'm like, you gotta keep in mind this is all happening over like the course of a week. That's not a brother. Like, because at this point I'm like, listen, I know last summer you guys had kissed and then she jumped like she left you for Conrad and Jeremiah was justifiably upset about that. I understand. I would be upset too, but Conrad didn't know. He genuinely had no idea. Genuinely did not know. And then he waited and then he like asked for Jeremiah's permission and then he got it and he waited until he got it to pursue things with Belly and it took freaking months. Like that was a little dragged out on my, in my opinion. Okay. He didn't know, right? Belly totally went wrong because she just keeps jumping back and forth and it's just like at this point it's like you get none of them like that that makes me mad too because I'm like their mom just died and their dad is awful they need each other and you're getting in the way of them like if you truly loved either of them or both of them you wouldn't be with either of them because you are not the best thing for them you're not like that's just genuinely you're not because the best thing for them would be to have a good relationship with each other and right now you were their only reason they have a bad relationship. So you need to just remove yourself from the situation, genuinely. I'm not saying forever, and I'm not saying dramatically, you can still be their friend, but I would be like, I'm not pursuing anything with either of you because I don't want to get in the middle. Like, if you truly love them, that's what you would do, to be honest. And also, like, not to mention that, like, your mother is basically, like, their mom now. Like, just... Seriously, like your feelings are not that important in this instance, like just let them work on their relationship together And I think it's so sad because you can tell that they're trying to work on it And like you could tell that like Jeremiah felt bad and like he kept going to check on Conrad and like I will defend Jeremiah in that aspect like he was way more concerned about Conrad's feelings than Belly was like Belly pissed me off She was like, let's just leave him. You're gonna take his car and leave him. Are you, are you serious? If that was me and someone said that about my sibling, I'd be like, yeah, you can stay here. We're gonna leave you here and I'm gonna go patch things up with my brother. Don't talk to me. Like, we're, I don't wanna talk to you because now I need to go fix, like, that's, I'm just saying. And like, so Jeremiah did keep going to check on him and he did feel worried. So like, 
I get it. Like, and then that's what makes me sad because you can tell that they want to have a good relationship and they get so close to fixing their relationship and then something happens with Belly and it ruins it. And I'm just like, if you really loved them, you would let them go. There's plenty of fish in the sea, my gal. Makes me sad. <laughs> and then I'm also like, you talk to Susanna. This woman was on her deathbed. The last time you saw her alive, she begged you to take care of Conrad. And you told her you would. And then you proceed to not take care of him and to shack up with his brother in front of his face. Couldn't be me. Could not be me. If that was me, I even if I genuinely had real feelings for Jeremiah and did not have feelings for Conrad, I would you you couldn't pay me to get with Jeremiah because I'm like, that is someone's dying wish and you're not gonna look after him. I would be like, yeah, you can't pry me away from Conrad because I promised Suzanne I would look after him. And even if that's not dating him, if he doesn't want to date, I'm certainly not gonna date his brother. It just makes me so angry. Honestly though, Steven slayed the season. I gotta say, Steven was the best character in season two, to be honest. I mean, Conrad always slays and I think that the actor did a really great job portraying his anxiety and all of the emotions he was feeling like on like with his facial expressions with like no dialogue I think he did a really good job um and I think Belly's actress actually did a very good job as well like I, she seems like a sweetheart I just the character really annoyed me this season but I guess I mean she did a good job I had to get that out because also I don't know anyone who watches that show in real life so you guys I had to discuss it I really did I keep trying to get my sister to watch it, but for whatever reason, she will not watch it. Those are kind of all my thoughts. Um, and now I feel sufficiently tuckered out. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a really great time chatting. Yeah, and I'll see you when I see you, so.